Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so today's video is another bat video. Um, so this one is a little commission. He is a grey flying fox that is similar to the ones found here in Australia uh, with the rust coloured neck. Um, so uh, yeah, this video I'll go through how I made him. Uh, and the wings are a little bit different from the previous ones that I've made. Uh, I'm really happy with the way these wings turned out. I have a process video over on my Patreon for the original concept of the wings and the whole process of what I did. Um, but I'm in the process of making a proper tutorial with um, these little bit more refined ring wings that I'm pretty happy with. They're a lot easier to make. Um, and I think they're a lot more durable as well. So it's, it's very similar. It's just different uh, method for the fabric. So yeah, if you want to see how I made him, then uh, keep watching. Alrighty, so starting off like normal with a resin cast of a sculpture. I have sculpted out of monster clay, molded in silicon and then cast in resin. And for this one, I am painting the eyes in, but sometimes I use glass eyes as well. But if you want to know what types of eyes that I use, I have a video over on my Patreon, which you can check out. And I go through all of the different eyes that I use, including glass eyes, painting them, um, and a couple of other uh, things as well. So for this one, I'm just using a water-based acrylic paint uh, called Chrome Acryl. And I'm basically just painting in the eyes um, for this one. Because they're so dark, um, I thought painting them, you can achieve a really good realistic eye with just paint and also a nice gloss. So for the gloss, um, I usually use a nail polish, which works really, really well for glossing over things that you want to be shiny or have that wet look. You can also get different types of gloss, so gloss from uh, the brand Liquitex that works quite well. But I found uh, nail polish is like really cheap and it dries really quickly and achieves a really nice uh, realistic wet look. But like always, if you're going to use something like nail polish, do test it on your products first. So for resin, sometimes they can have like a weird reaction. So definitely test it first before applying it to your final doll. I test mine and I didn't have any issues. Um, it's, it's really cheap, $2 a nail polish that I use. It's just a clear coat and um, yeah, I'm really happy with that type of nail polish. So the same deal for the feet as well. I paint them um, before I put the doll together uh, with that same chrome acrylic, acrylic paint. So for the faux fur, what I'm doing is a two-toned different type of body. So the body will be a gray color and the neck area will be a rust color. So this is a realistic coloring of um, an Australian flying fox. So I have this really nice rust colored faux fur that I've used for the neck area, which I've just cut out there, always leaving a little seam allowance for where I attach that pit to the gray faux fur. And then going in and measuring it out or drawing out the pattern on the gray faux fur it's just the bottom of the body this time so minus that neck bit because we're going to be attaching that rust color and this is the pattern that i've made myself you can find a couple of patterns over on my patreon as well including a wolf uh, body pattern that i previously used before for my older wolf sculpt which i've now retired and i released the body pattern to uh, my patrons so just be careful when you're drawing the pattern out on the back of the faux fur so if you're using like a white faux fur try to use a gray lead or something that uh, won't kind of stain or bleed through that white faux fur so sometimes you can have bleeding through lighter colors and darker ones I recommend using some chalk it's really simple and it rubs off so once I have this body drawn out, I can start cutting them out. This body is only a two-part body, so sometimes I have a three-part body or sometimes I hand sew like a skin over the top of the body. But for this one, it's really, really simple for flying foxes. I just have a two-part body where most of it I have to hand sew it because of the nature of the wings. Um, but yeah, it's uh, really easy to cut out the two part. It's just like a, literally a top and a bottom and the wings will sit in between the, the wings. So I have, like I said before, I have a wing tutorial over on my Patreon and I am currently working on one that's this particular specific wing, but it's pretty much the same process. It's just a different type of fabric treatment. 
So once that's done, I am using a ball and socket armature for all of my flying foxes that I've made. And I've recently put in an order for some a really limited amount of supplies of ball and socket armature that is coming very soon. I'll put them in my shop, but it is really limited, like I said. And once this is sold out, I am thinking of doing another pre-order uh, like I did before, but it won't be at the discounted 10% price. Uh, so yes, ball and socket armage is really great. It's kind of like my go-to uh, thing at the moment. Um, I really like using them. They're really quick and easy. I don't have to wait for anything to cure or dry. Um, but yeah, I have heaps of videos on my channel and YouTube about the ball and socket armature as well. So check that out. So it's just really just basically using this tool to click it on and uh, yeah, or take it off and take a little segment out to make it shorter. It's really universally easy. So once that's done, uh, lots of sewing will begin. So I start by gluing the neck area to the head and that acts as a nice solid base so I can sort of pull the body down and make it nice and flush and tight. I use a really good quality thread for when I'm sewing this up. So I use an upholstery thread for sewing all of my flying foxes because I really want that tight uh, seam line to close. And I use a ladder stitch to sew it all up. So just because I'm using that, um, the fabrics I'm using, uh, it doesn't have a pile. So you really want that seam line to be really flush against the wing. So therefore you need a good quality thread to be able to pull and have that tension when you're sewing. So I really dislike sewing <laughs> or hand sewing. So I always try to do um, the least amount of hand sewing but yeah just the nature of these flying foxes just require a lot of hand sewing and the cassowary doll that I'm working on is completely hand sewn because of the nature of, of the way I have constructed it so it's basically felting and then applying skin over the top but more on that in my videos about the cassowary. So once that's done and it's all sewn up I'm happy with it I can glue the legs together uh, and to the feet and kind of close it all up and, and, and finalize it. The stuffing that I use is a polyfill so it's the same sort of thing that you get in your pillows um, and I like to use that for felting as well. So once that's done I can start finishing everything, everything up and applying the faux fur to the head. Once that's applied I can give it a nice little trim and make it more um, blended but I can blend it in a bit more to the body and make it look a bit more realistic. And then I start adding any of the little details that uh, I need to add. So this can be like patterns or shading or uh, like, like I'm doing here is the shading around the eyes. And it really, I find these bits really bring it to life as well. So it's really the smaller bits that bring your doll to life and make it look re really realistic. So do take some time on doing all the little details because it will pay off at the end. So like I said before, this one was a commission, so it is sold, but I do have some flying foxes available in my shop and payment plans are always welcome. Just shoot me a message beforehand and we can talk through the process. I'm super flexible on payments as well, so uh, we can make it work for anyone. Uh, so head over to my shop at creaturesandhat.com and check out what is available. I uh, really like the way these ones turned out. I really like the way the flying fox turned out in general, I should say. They're one of my favorite dolls that to finish. Um, and it's just a little bit different from the other dolls that I made previously. So uh, yeah, you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And also thank you very much to my patrons for supporting me. I really appreciate it. I hope the videos that I'm uploading on there um, give you a little bit more insight on how I make the dolls. So if you want to check that out, uh, head to my Patreon, any uh, any tier you get some kind of reward, uh, link in the description. But again, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!